Here I want to talk to you about the electron configuration of ions. Remember that ions have different numbers of electrons compared to their atoms. Now, it's really important to recognize that the noble gas configuration is extremely stable. And it turns out that atoms usually form ions that have noble gas electron configurations. And as a result, those ions are very stable. Now, in our periodic table, we're familiar with the main group elements. Those are found in the S block and the P block. And nonmetals in group 5, 6, and 7, they all are nonmetals, and they gain electrons to achieve a filled shell. So let's look at a few examples. Nitride is N with a negative 3 charge. So first, we want to write out the electron configuration for nitrogen. Now, remember how we do that. We build it up moving from top to bottom and left to right in the periodic table. So it's 1s2, 2s2, and 2p3. And we stop there because that's where nitrogen is located in group 5. And now we need to add three electrons for the negative 3 ion. And we do that in the last shell. So the 2p3 becomes 2p6. Now, interestingly enough, neon also has that exact same electron configuration. And so we say that neon is isoelectronic with nitride. Sulfide is a um, ion that's formed from sulfur in group 6 of the periodic table. Our first step is to write out the electron configuration for sulfur. Okay, You should know how to do this and be semi-familiar and comfortable doing this. But uh, this is the electron configuration for sulfur. Um, it's got a partially filled 3p subshell. And now we need to add two more electrons to create the minus 2 ion. And we do that by changing the 3p4 to a 3p6. Okay? And argon has this exact same electron configuration. So we say sulfide has a noble gas configuration. Fluoride is located in the halogens. Fluorine is located in the halogens. And fluoride is an ion that's formed when fluorine gains one electron. So first, we write out the electron configuration for fluorine. Okay, It's almost got a completely filled 2p subshell. When we add one more electron to create the minus 1 ion, we form a completed 2p6 subshell and a completed n equals 2 shell. Neon has this exact same electron configuration, so fluoride is isoelectronic with neon. Now, let's take a look at the main group elements found in groups one, two, and you know, there's just aluminum there in group three that we want to talk about. Um, these are going to lose electrons to fill, uh, achieve a filled shell. Remember that metals form cations, and these atoms lose electrons to become positive. So lithium ion is Li plus. We've memorized that it's in group one and it should be a plus one charge. So now we can really explain why that's the case. First, we write out the electron configuration for lithium. It's 1s2, 2s1, and we stop there because lithium has three electrons. Now we want to remove an electron from the last shell to create the plus one ion. So we basically grab an eraser and erase that section, okay? And we have an electron configuration that's isoelectronic with helium. So that's pretty cool. That's why lithium is plus one in charge. Let's take a look at calcium ion. Calcium's in group two of the periodic table, and it's a plus two charge. Why? Well, let's write out the electron configuration for calcium. It's pretty low there in the periodic table in period four, so it's got a bunch of stuff here. But if you look at the last part of the electron configuration, it's got 4s2 there. Now we want to remove two electrons from the last shell to create the plus two ion. So we grab an eraser and erase the 4s2 portion. And we can see how now this has the electron configuration that's exactly the same as argon. So calcium ion or calcium two plus is isoelectronic with argon. And that's why it forms a plus two ionic charge to become exactly like argon. Things with filled shells tend to be more stable. Now how about aluminum ion? Al plus 3, okay, so this is in group 3 of the periodic table, okay? 
and the electron configuration is written out here. You can see how it has a 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, so a filled n equals 1 and an n equals 2 shell. And then there's some extra electrons in the n equals 3 shell that do not completely fill it. It's got 3s2 and 3p1. Now to form a negative, a positive 3 ion, we need to remove three negatively charged electrons to give us the plus three charge. So where do those three electrons come from? Just to make sure we're clear on this, you're going to lose a total of three electrons, two from the s orbital and one for the p orbital, and you're basically erasing that section off the electron configuration to give you the electron configuration for aluminum ion, which is isoelectronic with neon. So that's predicted to be very stable and a common oxidation state for the aluminum ion. Now how about transition metals? Transition metals are a little bit different. Um, they are found in the D block of the periodic table, okay? And they're all metals, so we know that they lose electrons to become cations. But actually, you need to be very careful about this. The S electrons are lost first, then D electrons are lost later as needed. All right? And they do not achieve a noble gas electron configuration in many cases. So let's take a look at Cr3 plus ion. We call this the chromium 3 ion. Let's write the electron configuration for chromium. And I'm going to use abbreviated electron configurations just so things are a little bit easier. All right. So we start off by building off of argon. So there it is in the periodic table. Then we tack on 4s2. And then we tack on 3d4. Remember that the d orbitals are one behind the four. OK? So now we have this electron configuration for a neutral chromium atom. And what we need to do is remove three electrons to form the plus three ion. So first, you have to take the electrons away from the 4s subshell. OK? So we're going to erase those out. So we're removing two electrons. That gives us the plus two ion. And then we need to remove one more electron to give us a total loss of three electrons to give us the chromium-3 ion, which is going to be argon-3d3. That's the electron configuration for chromium-3. Now, interestingly enough, if this chromium ion lost three additional electrons, it would be chromium-6 ion. And that is another oxidation state for chromium that does have a noble gas electron configuration, but chromium-3 ion does not, okay? All right, so let's take a look at another section of the periodic table before we end the video. Post-transition metals are elements that are found after the transition metals, but right before the metalloids. And there's a lot of debate about which elements to include there, um, but I won't get into this, okay? Now, what you wanna do is, of course, these are metals, so they lose electrons to form cations, but you want to lose the electro S electrons first, then the P electrons. So you don't mess around with the D electrons at all. They're considered core electrons that are closer to the nucleus, okay? And they sometimes achieve noble gas electron configurations. So let's take a look at the electron configuration of gallium. Gallium ion is plus three in some cases. And so we first want to write out the electron configuration for gallium. And we do that by building off of argon and write the abbreviated electron configuration here. So argon is the start, and then 4s2, 3d10 filled all the, all the way in, and then we have one electron in the 4p subshell. Gallium is element number 31 there. Now we want to remove three electrons to form the plus three ion. So first, by removing electrons from the 4s. So here are the 4s electrons, okay? And we want to remove two electrons from that. And so we would have a plus two charge and they go away. And now we want to keep removing electrons. Here we just need to remove one more electron and we do that from the 4p shell. Now you might be wondering, why don't we remove it from the 3d10 level? It's because, remember, that n equals 3 means that the electrons are closer to the nucleus compared to the n equals 4. So we're removing electrons that are on the outside of the atom. So let's go ahead and remove one electron from this 4p subshell, and that's going to give us the uh, electron configuration that looks like this, argon 3d10. 
Now, these 3d10 electrons are considered to be core electrons, so gallium plus 3 ion is considered to have zero valence electrons. But this is technically not isoelectronic because argon doesn't have d orbitals, okay? It doesn't have 3d10, but this is the electron configuration, and gallium plus 3 is extremely stable because it has completely filled shells. So thanks for watching. Uh, please consider subscribing, and I hope these videos are helping you in your chemistry course.